Um, thank you for having me, everybody, and thanks for everyone in, a, in attendance. Uh, it's great to be here today. I am representing Cleveland, uh, and I am here to lower the bar for everybody as I talk about my new package uh, called Sarcasm. Uh, and what does this package do? Very simply, it takes this text input and outputs this weird randomized mixed casing uh, format. And now I know what you're thinking. Uh, you're thinking, where does this format come from? Uh, and yes, it comes from a meme. It comes from that meme. Is this guy really showing us SpongeBob memes right now? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I promise there are no more memes in this talk. Um, and yes, I do recognize that this particular SpongeBob meme is on its way out. Uh, but interestingly enough, this uh, particular format, just what I'm calling intra word randomized casing, is persisted in the uh, internet vernacular. Uh, it's been adopted uh, as a, a way to express uh, ridicule or mockery. And I, I got to hand it to Gen Z. Uh, they created a, a new mode of expression. Uh, for the written word, it's uh, really rich and uh, you know, uh, conveys a lot, albeit for very niche applications. So that, with that in mind, I really should have called this package uh, mocker. Uh, then I could maybe have uh, changed the hex sticker to you know be a play on the Docker whale. But uh, oh well, uh, that's just because I'm such a thoughtful person. Uh, how about Jim Hester's talk this morning? Uh, it was great. Jim, I want to personally thank you for updating ODBC to 1.3. Uh, really saved my bacon at work. Uh, what a treat. If we were to compare his uh, talk to a dessert, it'd probably be, it'd probably be something like this, a gold leaf uh, ice cream dessert. Very high quality, really interesting, creative. Uh, the bill is probably very expensive. Um, what you're going to hear today is more like... Uh, Novelty ice cream, uh, not the most groundbreaking, uh, perhaps a bit juvenile, uh, but hopefully a bit of fun. So go ahead, relax, turn off your brain, uh, but not too much. Uh, hopefully there's something in this talk for everyone, whether you're a beginner, intermediate or intermediate going into advanced, uh, there's a bit of something here. Um, so again, the objective of this, a very simple objective is to take this input text and output the text modified in a slightly different form. And there's a you know, myriad ways you could go about doing this and thinking about this, uh, but I wanted to use functionals. Uh, what are functionals? Functionals are defined as functions that accept a function as an argument uh, and return a vector as output. And LApply is one of these functionals that you might be uh, very aware of, but if you're not, or if you've uh, been wanting to figure out how this uh, function works, uh, I will give you a little demonstration. Let's say you have your function and it's called B. Uh, and like most other functions, it takes an input um, and it returns an output. Uh, since we have a one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, our inputs and our outputs. So how do we use this function B with LApply? Uh, in the second argument of the LApply function, you input your function definition. Now, it doesn't have to be a named function like we have here. You can also use anonymous functions uh, in there. Uh, but in the first argument, you pass a list or a vector, um, and then what you get as a result is uh, a sort of one-to-one -one correspondence between your inputs and your outputs. Your uh, B function is being applied uh, sequent in turn to all of the elements of the vector um, or list. And so this, you know, can uh, be naturally applied to the problem at hand. We have a bunch of letters in our text and we want to split that into so we can apply a function to each of the letters. And so I use the handy string split function to do that to my input and string splits automatically vectorized. So uh, I don't have to uh, think about that. Um, but let's just take the case where I'm putting in one string. Uh, so when I split the string into each letters, uh, I'm applying a function to each letter. Uh, and uh, this is just the function that I've written. I apply a random case to each letter. 
uh, and then I paste those letters back together to get my words back. Um, and so, uh, you know, L apply is really nice. It's expressive. It's it's uh, concise. I don't have to write all the boilerplate for the for loops and stuff like that um, to uh, you know write down what I want to want the computer to do. Um, so one of the main reasons I made this package kind of is, is of course to get that function, but also to practice a bit of Python programming techniques. Python has a thing uh, called list comprehensions um, that are really, I think are really uh, beautiful. Uh, and it works similarly, um, but not quite. The whole the overall framework is the same though. We split the characters uh, and then we're joining something back together and that something is uh, two list comprehensions uh, run back to back, a random case for each character in a word for each word in the split text. And the join, again, just kind of mushes those characters back together. And I get that back. And this is really, really nice. Uh, it's really short and really easy to understand. Uh, I have this wrapped up in a module in here that I've affectionately called uh, PySnark. Uh, in the making of this presentation, I also wanted to practice a little bit of JavaScript. Um, so I took the same idea um, and uh, I used the for loop here. And so for each letter in the text, uh, I apply some random function of either upcasing or downcasing, and that lets me do cute stuff uh, like this to the text. Uh, so that's all fun. Uh, and uh, that's that's really it, right? Uh, picking something simple, a simple objective that you can have fun with, really makes practicing programming uh, a lot more uh, easy to swallow. Um, and you can take it, you know, take this problem with you to any program lang programming language or framework that you want to practice. Uh, but that's not it. I didn't want to just stop there with that function. I want to do something else with it. Um, and so I was, you know, just thinking. And uh, hmm, so that brought me to thinking about error handling. Error handling is pretty cool. Uh, I can't go into too much depth in it today. Uh, but when you set an option, uh, error equals something. By, null, uh, by default, it's null. And it'll just report the error. A really useful one is recover. Um, and that, what that does basically is it's let you, it lets you inspect your environment at each uh, position in the call stack, every nested function basically, uh, so that you can figure out what went wrong. Recover is very useful. I encourage you to use it. Um, but this, in, uh, it sort of implies we can put something else in here. What is recover? It's just a function. It's just a function. So we can define our own function, right? Uh, and potentially pass that into the error handling option. Another thing we can do is turn error messages off. I don't know why you would want to do that in practice, but um, you can. Uh, so, hmm, okay. Uh, that made me think that perhaps I want to contribute to the, uh, you know, extensive uh, field of our pranks. Uh, you might be familiar with the classics, such as uh, changing true to false and F to true. Um, and you can do that because T and F, while they resolve to true and false, are not reserved keywords. So I do encourage you not to actually use T and F in your own programming or doing things like changing the definition of a plus symbol. Uh, Romain Francois has a evil R package uh, that does a bunch of this funny stuff where um, your error message will just be replaced with this shruggy guy. Um, and so I want to do something similar. Uh, that brings me to the praise package. Uh, and I really like this package. It's pretty cool. It's kind of like a, a, an affirming positive um, Mad Libs sort of thing where uh, you input these parts of the sentence and it will uh, kind of sample randomly to construct the full sentence. Um, this is nice, but you know, it's 2020, so we don't deserve nice things. Um, so I give you uh, demoralizing errors. Uh, this is an error handler that the package has. Um, and what it is basically, uh, we're doing what we just said, we're turning error messages off and we're setting our error handler to be something else that we've constructed. 
uh, we get the error message and we're displaying that. We're displaying the error message just as the way it is, but we attack onto it uh, something I'm calling ridicule. And uh, what is ridicule, uh, I think it uh, just worked out nicely that ridicule is, is sarcastic praise, basically. Um, so it takes the uh, praise parts and it sort of <laughs> turns it uh, sarcastically. Um, and uh, just a brief demo of what, how that works. Um, there is a probability option that you can set. So here I'm setting it to 0.5. You can turn demoralizing errors on and uh, there is an option to make it silent. Uh, and uh, you all probably are aware what happens when I run this next line. Uh, it is the classic, the one and only object of type closure is not subsettable. But given the probability, uh, you know, every so often you'll get something that says like, that was perfect or nice job or something like that. Um, and so I think that that's really where I wanted to get to is Pranking your friends. How do you do this? You download the package. Uh, you insert this into their R profile, uh, preferably with some very small probability. And then you start the uh, error handler with the silent equals true option so that they don't see anything at the start of their uh, session. And then you wait. And then maybe you activate the evil R package too for fun. Uh, but every, every one out of 100 errors, their computer will make fun of them. Uh, so that's all good, clean, fun. Uh, make sure it's your friend, though. Uh, that's that's important. Um, so like I said, there is a Python package uh, or module uh, specifically in here as well. Um, and uh, I don't, I, I might have time to go a little deeper into it, I think, at this point. Um, but, oops, I wanted to um, give a couple of tips uh, that I learned as I, you know, again, this is practice, uh, as I was putting this module into my R package, um, when you want to ship uh, scripts of any other language, uh, but Python especially, or a module, uh, one way to do it is to put it in the INST directory of your R package. Um, and what this direct, what's special about this directory is that when it installs, when your R package installs, everything in the ins directory also installs into uh, the package source on, or, or the package on your computer um, along with it. What's also cool about this directory is that if you use the system.file function with the package name in there, wherever you install the package, you can refer subdirectories of this inst uh, directory. So um, that's how you access your scripts. Um, and so uh, with the reticulate package, now if I want to use a Python script uh, in my R session, um, I, can I can now use import from path uh, along with system file to target the, the Python script or module every time. Um, and so I'm just gonna show uh, the readme that I have for this package. Um, I'm gonna, whoops, I'm gonna run through uh, just these uh, primary chunks here and get to the Python module. And this is where I make use of this idea. Um, now I use the system file uh, command specifying package equals sarcasm and module, or the, the path equals PySmart. And what that resolves to is where, where I've installed this, this package. This is uh, uh, where I've installed it. This is actually the source. So it's referring to the source directory. Uh, but if you've installed the package, it will go to um, wherever you've installed it. So like if I put dplyr in here, uh, this goes and gets the uh, installation path for dplyr. So with that, I can now import from that path this module uh, for PySnark. Um, and if I run this, I get uh, snarky text um, back from it. And to prove that this is actually a uh, Python module, you can see that this is um, the A function at this particular, particular memory address. Um, I think if it was R, R would actually print the definition of the function. Um, 
Uh, so yeah, that's it. Uh, just a, a bit of levity for this morning. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, uh, having me. I hope uh, and additional thanks for uh, Hakim Al Hatab, who is maintaining Reveal JS. Uh, it's really improved uh, since I used it last year. Wow, I like what a great talk. This was definitely one of the uh, fun and relaxing moments of 2020 for <laughs> you all. And I really have tears in my eyes as I was just watching you. So thank you for that. Um, and I guess just to add on the, the joy we have right now, one of the first questions or top questions or comments is uh, they're saying cat people might prefer per map over uh -huh. outfly. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, yes. I, I put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I did have a per map in there, uh, but I, I was uh, running over time a little bit, so I <laughs> yeah, accessed right. it. Uh, so this is really wonderful. Do you have a blog uh, where you kind of have similar points uh, in a more static page? Uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I have this when my website set up. Um, I'm actually using blog down uh, to maintain that website, um, which is an R package uh, for anyone who didn't know. Um, I, I haven't actively been blogging, <laughs> so I, I really do need to get started. Um, and one of the other questions is, uh, have you ever set ridicule probability to one? Yes, yes. And I think that's that's uh, kind of why I selected this hex sticker is because uh, while I was uh, developing this setting ridicule probability to one, it kind of felt a bit masochistic to have this <laughs> uh, make my computer making fun of me all the time. Um, and a final question is how to best use this when uh, teaching art to students? I actually thought your examples were wonderful. I'm thinking about stealing some of them myself. So thank you for that. It was um, really amazing. And I will let you answer the question. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Please go ahead. Feel free to steal anything from this. Um, I think. Uh, let's see. One one of the other things that I didn't touch on is uh, if I can get this directory open. Um, there's not a lot in here. There's just one R file, and that's it. And it, there's basically the default. Uh, uh, infrastructure for in, in our package. So uh, one other thing this is nice to, sh to use to show is, is uh, you know, what, what, what are the bare bones stuff that you need for in our package? Um, and I have some informal tests in here. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, I don't know. I, I just thought it was fun. Well, this was really great. Um... So we will let the uh, our next next speaker now.